We're back, people, and today we're going to film on the Miami Dolphins offensive line. And I really just want to get into it and explain, like, the philosophy because this has been a big discussion for Dolphins fans for a long time, but, like, over Twitter the past few days, it seems like a lot of people are talking about it. And I just really want to explain why the Dolphins build their offensive line the way they do. And we'll get in, you know, the good, the bad, but I think there's a fair reasoning behind it. I think that's why, you know, uh, it tends to get over-talked about, in my opinion, just because it's really really one of the better ways i think to build your offenses in today's nfl because if you look at the top of the league every single year it's the shanahan tree offenses where mcdaniel come from and they all run a very similar philosophy like right now saints offense is the best in the league and the saints have a bad offensive line and the main reason they're still able to be successful with a bad offensive line is really just need guys that are capable of run blocking which i do think the dolphins o-line has been good at run blocking they're like fourth in epa run blocking o-line wise uh, so I think if the running game can be successful, that's fine. But in pass protection, for the most part, they don't get a lot of true one-on-one -on -one pass sets. And that's like the key to the NFL right now. Offensive line play around the league is just overall weak overall. So instead of trying to build up your own line, which is very, very difficult to do, to have like an elite offensive line across the board, they do it with play calling and scheme. They very rarely have true one-on-one -on -one pass sets. And the way they do that, you know, they throw a lot of screens. I do think they th throw too many screens that needs to go down because that's inefficient but they run the ball they use play action and the way they use play action to slow down the pass rush is just so so efficient they do it better than pretty much anyone and they've been doing it for years now and still have a top offense in the league that's a reason the dolphins like obviously they look at their maybe their talent on paper and they're thinking like hey if we're having true one-on-one -on -one pass sets that's why they got kind of exposed versus the bills because that's like the only situation where you get it bad in is when you have to our one-on-one -on -one true pass setting that's the only reason like and the only reason they did like versus the bills because they went down early and you get into these third and fourth down situations where you have to have these true one-on-one -on -one pass sets because it's obvious passing situation that's kind of where the dolphins have their main weakness there uh so like obviously and like i'm not saying like i would do this exactly like, i probably would have added like i've talked about i would add another early round guard just because i think that could have helped out with consistency but you see when they get in true one-on-one -on -one pass sets like the offensive line is gonna lose a decent amount of those because they're not the most talented group on paper but they the Dolphins have always done a great job of not putting themselves in position that's why you have players like Mc, you know coaches like McDaniel look around the league look at the Saints the Niners uh the Rams they all have pretty weak offensive lines they really only value tackles like they'll take tackles pretty high and then they value like an athletic center but they don't need to use like high you know quality on it and the reason like I talk about this we'll look at this first play is a good example the way they use their play action but look how these they just don't get true one-on-one -on -one pass sets like it's not just dropping obvious pass, but it's play action and then look at this they slide everyone here to the left with this you know fake toss action and then everyone on the right side gets engaged instantly and since they're kind of king run like this might be a run in the way they you know they get very aggressive they jump set into them the d line is just kind of frozen and it makes the job on the offensive line very very easily uh in these situations so now they're just engaged and they just have to hold on to their blocks for a second and even if they get beat here pretty quickly Tua is going to be letting go of the ball. Getting to his second read, throws the ball down the field to Waddle, and it creates this big play because you're not allowing these true one-on-one -on -one pass sets. And this is how you win in the league and have a great offense. Obviously, the Dolphins' offense has been inconsistent, but I don't think the O-line has been the main reason for that. I think it's played a part, and obviously you would want it to be better. And then you can have like situations like this. This is where you have to true pass set. Uh, it's a third and like pretty long here. It's like third and 16 or something like that. And they only bring three. Austin Jackson just gets kind of destroyed in a one-on-one. -on -one. This is where he gets a true one-on-one -on -one pass set and he just gets taken out of the play. Tua could have avoided it and, you know, potentially played it better too. But this is kind of the one situation where having a weak old line gets you in trouble when you do have to just do this stuff. The Dolphins just do it at a much lower level. Like, they very rarely get these situations throughout the NFL. Like, last year, if you look at it, it's way, way down compared to most of the league. And, like, you look at the Saints, who have the best offense for, for the first two weeks. Their old line is not good. They can run block. And I think the Dolphins... Owens line, their main issue is when they get in those true one-on-one -on -one pass sets. And uh, I think they've had too many penalties. So, like, they need to clean that stuff up. Definitely not, like, excusing their play. There's just, it, it, it's the, like, people have been blaming Chris Greer. I don't think it's a Greer thing. I think it's because McDaniel's the head coach. Uh, this is just a philosophy. It's worked for many years. And there's a reason that uh, those, off, those offenses are, like, the best in the league. Here's just another example of it. Creating it with play action, you kind of, you know, with the pull, from your left guard, it kind of creates like, oh, looks like it might be a running play. Everyone else kind of aggressive sets in pass protection, gets engaged. And it just looks like it could potentially be. The Dolphins also run a lot of RPOs, which can slow down, you know, pass rush. And it just really slows down everyone up front. 
uh, Eichenberg, and then you have your running back help out some of the interior guys. Like this guy starts to get off of Austin Jackson, and two was able to reset and find Tyreek for the touchdown. The two biggest plays of the season came because you created these clean pockets with just a good play call. That's why like the philosophy. And when people talk about offensive line, especially, and you have someone like Tua, like I do think I will say this: the offensive line will look worse, like you know, worse in quotation marks, just like because Tua's out. Because Tua gets rid of the ball so quickly and plays with great timing. Maybe uh, if Skylar Thompson or Tyler Huntley is playing, they can potentially escape more pockets because they're a little more athletic. But I do think they will hold on to the ball a little bit longer, which could potentially make the O-line look worse. Uh, but that's why like the O-line in pass protection isn't super important who you have in there unless it's true one-on-one -on -one pass sets, which it pretty rarely is. And it hasn't been like they've just been awful in true one-on-one -on -one pass sets. They've definitely had their losses. But as you can see, like they do this with the play action. They slide uh, here. They slide people to the right. They pull the right guard this time. It just really, really slows down. Builds pass rushes. They get guys engaged very quickly instead of you know uh, going into like a, a vertical set, forty-five degree set where you know this guy is reading pass rush and uh, you know has a good time to execute their plan. You get the tight end engaged here. Liam then can take him late. Uh, this was one where they had the miscommunication with the receiver and Tua kind of sailed it, so it turned into an interception. But this is not on the O-line. Like They actually do a decent job here, but it's mainly because McDaniel's making the job easy on them. That's why I've never been like super, super worried about the O-line because as long as you don't go down super early and put yourself in these terrible situations, and uh, like this, uh, you get this is a fourth down. In short, they know your pass rush. They're, they know you're going to throw the ball. You're in empty. Ball has to come out quick. Tua looks to the left here. It's off the screen, but Waddle slips, and that was his first read. So then he's not able to get rid of the ball quickly. Robert Jones gets a one-on-one, -on -one, which uh, Robert Jones has definitely been the worst of the starting 5-0 linemen, like, by far, uh, through the first two games. Like, he had two bad, really bad games, um, while the other guys at least had some decent looks in the first game versus the Jaguars. Some else, others struggled. But he just gets beat one-on-one, -on -one, and that's where your offensive line is going to, you know, fall apart because it's not... A talented group like i look at the group and think like yeah it's not a very good group but they can execute the running scheme they get the the ball on the outside they've been running well even on the inside stuff i think they have like that 11th uh successful run rate in between the tackles and it's not like they're the greatest group of guys but they they I've, have some decent tackles center uh who fits the scheme perfectly but then you get in these true one-on-one -on -one pass sets again but even like plays like this like look at austin jackson 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 probably had his worst game in years here versus Von Miller, and you can look at look at him here. He oversets. He gets a one. It's a true one on one pass set. It's a third down situation. So you get in these third and longs, and it's like okay, now the teams. This is where they can pin their ear backs. It's pretty much the only time you can do this against the Dolphins. It's when it's these third and long, obvious passing situation. They know they can just get after the quarterback. You can't just use play action because they know you're not going to run the ball. Uh, and Jackson gets a one on one and gets absolutely obliterated by Von Miller. But even then, like two is getting rid of the ball so quickly, going to his second read to find Waddle across the field. That still is a completed big play. Like they have a lot of ways of really avoiding offensive line play. Here's just another example of it using scheme, using, you know, the aggressive sets, using some play action. The way I love how they use the pocket too, like how they move to around to reset and give him better throwing angles. They pull the right guard across with Liam. They have tight ends get involved. And then two is able to go through his progression, not see anything, and then dump it down to HN in the flat who makes a guy miss, creates a big play. Uh, here's another true one on pass it. And I will say, the Jaguars and Bills, the first two games they've had, are two very good fronts. Like, they were the strongest parts of each of the defenses, in my opinion, was the fronts of both of them. And I still found, like, you know, they did a pretty good job versus Jacksonville. Versus the Bills, I actually think they ran the ball pretty well versus Buffalo. It just was, uh, got down a little bit too early. Uh, and then Jackson, and then, like, here, it's like, they actually blocked pretty decently here in true pass. Like, this is another true pass that where they actually do a decent job. Uh, they slide to the right, so they've been helping Liam out, leaving Jones isolated. And this is like where the negative comes from: is Robert Jones is getting too many penalties? Like right here, he holds. He doesn't need to hold. If he lets go, like right there, starts to let go as Tua escapes the pocket, he Tua probably still outruns him to the sideline and picks up you know whatever amount of yards. Uh, just gets called back from holding. That's kind of hurt the offense. Is these pointless holdings? Because it's been mostly pointless holding calls for them. Um, here's some true one-on-one -on -one pass sets early on in the game. I think early on in the game is important. When it's early on in the game, and it's, uh, I think the, and you can see like how much space is created. Tua can step up in the pocket, can wait for his receiver to get into the second window behind the the nickel right there, and then find Waddle. 
early in the game, I think they can get into these true pass sets. Uh, the teams aren't, you know, as pinning their ear backs, getting after it. They're trying to work like some stunts, it seems, up front too, with how 90, wide 92 gets. I think there's some miscommunication on the D line there. But they're actually were able to do this pretty well in the in early parts of the game. But once, you know, they started to tire down and it went down early, like, and some of the guys got hurt too, then they were in trouble. Uh, I love how they finished the game for Jacksonville. I want to see more of this. I want to see more just basic run concepts. It doesn't always need to be the crack tosses. I want to see, you know, you can still utilize your motions and things like that. Here they don't. But it's just some nice. Nice gap scheme work. I want to see more power, counter, things like that. They pull in across. You have the lead with Angle. They down block in right here with Julian Hill and Austin Jackson. Let them bully. Then your left guard pulls through. And then Jeff Wilson's able to work downfield. I actually feel like this is what they need to do versus Seattle. Um, uh, Seattle barely beat New England. And New England looked about as bad as I've ever seen a team look last night versus, versus New York. Um, so... If the Dolphins can run the ball, I think they can have a chance. Here's another example of them being able to get on down the edge. This is also an example of them crack tossing with uh, receivers and tight ends being involved and we're focused on the line. Really, like this is why sometimes they don't even care about the O line and how they run block is they are able to get on the edge as long as Robert Jones doesn't get the hold here. Like literally, he could get beat. Let the guy work through it. Even if he works through here, Moser's going to still get to this edge around that guy. But Robert Jones gets this play called back because he just held him for pretty much no reason. Like. Uh, it's just kind of dumb plays like that. Um, but there was a lot of cr clean pockets being able to be created. This one doesn't co get completed, but it was early on in the Jacksonville game, third down. They're showing pressure up front, uh, but they leave a tight end in to block. They're able to get some double teams working across the board. Jackson wins his one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and it gives you time. It just, on that specific play, no one got open. I think that's also been kind of a problem, is no one's really gotten open in a certain situations, like not as much as usual for them facing man-to-man -man in that first game. Uh, but even screens like this, like they are going to throw some screens. Brewer does a good job. Jackson gets out there and gets some bodies on people. Same thing with Liam to cut people off. They've been running too many screens. Like this was one of the bigger plays, but most of the time it's just kind of inefficient. And I understand like having a poor line can affect play calling and then can hurt you to not, you know, open up a full playbook. But when it comes to the Dolphins, like there's not a lot of, time they want to have these true one-on-one -on -one passes but here's another one this is another fourth down where it's like obvious passing situation and they block up well pretty front or uh, up front pretty well uh and they just slide to the right and they leave kind of armstead isolated on the backside. and then jones is able to get you know into the body of 95 pretty quickly and actually plays a pretty good rep they slide they have help here a uh, good job by brewer helping out eichenberg and then armstead i feel like you can leave armstead isolated on the backside. It just puts the left guard, the left guard, like the right guard has the easiest job in the system. The Dolphins slide to the right a lot more. So he gets a lot of more help from the center. The left guard, I think, is the one like, that's why Isaiah Wynn was so helpful because Isaiah Wynn was actually good in isolated pass protection. That's why the Dolphins offense always looked like, it was at its best actually when they had a better left guard. That's why I was kind of on the team, you know, drafting a guard in this first or second round. Because I think if you have a better left guard, that would be a, a big help for the system. But even up here, they use the, the play action. It creates a clean pocket. And the, really the only uh, way Tua gets pressure here pretty quickly is because there's miscommunication between Armstead and Ingold. Armstead takes the inside guy. Ingold also was going to. And then Ingold uh, gets out of position, doesn't get eyes on 33. So there's some miscommunication there, even though one of them isn't an offensive lineman. Uh, but that's kind of where you get yourself into trouble. But versus Jacksonville, versus a very good D-line. Like They did a good job up front. Here they actually slide to the left. Uh, Eichenberg, Jackson, uh, the double team here, Armstead to the left side. They hold up well and give Tua a chance to deliver a nice 20-yard out route to Jalen Waddle for first down on like a third and eight situation. Uh, so they overall did a fairly decent job, even like this. Like they used the play action to create a clean pocket. Uh, 41, Josh Allen gets isolated on a tight end. So this is even the offensive line fault. I mean, and I wouldn't put too much blame on Julian. Julian Hill loses badly here, but it's Josh Hines Allen, who's a very good player. Uh, but even then, him winning quickly, like, Tua is still able to get rid of the ball and complete a 20-yard pass down the field just because of the offensive scheme and philosophy. Like, even if the guys lose their reps pretty quickly in these situations, you're still able to complete a lot of these plays down the field just due to your receivers, quarterback, uh, and their execution. I also think the running game has missed some opportunities because of the running backs. Here's just one example of it, but there's definitely other ones. I think Moser missed one on his first run of the season. Uh, but you can see, like, basically running outside zone here with, like, on the backside, some, like, 
gap type philosophies to it as well. Uh, but they just like cut off there, cut off there. And if Achan is reading this, you're usually reading and minimalize scrimmage down. But he just needs to read the leverage of this block right here and get to the outside. Because if he gets in here, he actually has a pretty big crease. You know, maybe Smythe doesn't get the best block on 57. So maybe 50, you know, 57 has a chance to make a play. But if Achan gets up through here, he has a lot of space to work with. It's just a poor read. And that was kind of an, another problem with the offense. Not just uh, purely based on them. But like the offensive line, I feel like, has done a pretty decent job run blocking. Not perfect. Like right here, Armstead gets called for a hold. Wright makes a good read. Gets off the back of his blocks here, off 81, 89, gets skinny through the hole. Actually makes a good job. And I, I do think this holding call was uh, another one that was was kind of weak. I don't know why that got called, actually. like It doesn't seem super egregious. Like Armstead's uh, in the chest of the guy. He tries to work over the top, but he's still like in in, in the interior, in the, the sternum, which is interesting. But they called this one back. There's just a lot of plays where they kind of beat themselves. Um, like up front. Here's another situation where they're trying to convert a third down. You have to have a true pass set. And this is kind of, this is the one situation where I'm like, yes, I wish we had a better offensive line, specifically left guard. Because I understand it's hard. Like, it's very difficult to build a good offensive line in the NFL nowadays just anyways. I do think they should, should have added one more body. But, like, Robert Jones loose pretty quickly. Tua has to get rid of the ball uh, over to this side of the field. I think, you know, Tyreek and Waddle. I believe Waddle kind of slipped on this play. Or Waddle was open and probably going to hit Waddle. But Tyreek was kind of his first read. Um, I can't remember what it looked like from the outside copy. I think one of them might have kind of got slipped up. or may Oh, you know what it was? I think Tyreek wanted a penalty. This guy, like, slowed down Tyreek. I think Tyreek probably would have been open. Uh, but the guy, like, either held him up or, like, a legal contact type situation. But either way, the O-line kind of loses up front. But the way they're run blocking, man, there's good run blocking reps. Like, I actually think, like, there's some guy, like, Brewer's a good run blocker. I think Armstead's just a good player, obviously, if he's healthy. I think Jackson does a much better job as a run blocker. Look at them, like, just creating all this space. And then I think, you know, Julian Hill's a pretty good run blocker. I think Eichenberg feels more comfortable as a run blocker than a pass blocker. I think the same thing with Robert Jones. They've used him on poles, and that's just beautiful work. I think the Dolphins have to be a run-first team, which they kind of haven't been a run-first team. Like, McDaniel does a great job with his run concepts. Like, his design and run concepts are really, really good. Um, and I do think they need to lean more on that. Uh, less let, Like, I know they're going to still want to run, like, screens, design touches like that. I still think it just become a less part of the offense because I think it makes the Dolphins inefficient. And then here was like probably the O-line's biggest fault in the game is when they gave it pressure very quickly and uh, Tua made the poor decision. He tried to throw it away but just couldn't get it out of bounds. Uh, but to be fair, this is when Kendall Lamb and Lester Cotton came in the game. Like uh, Armstead and Jones just went out with injuries, like both of them at the same time. Uh, and they kind of get trouble working the stunt here. They don't pass it off. Like Lamb carries the inside, Lester gets... Uh, the guy loops to the outside. It just like probably should have been able to pass that off. Uh, first read isn't open, so Tua kind of you know has to throw it away, and then it ends up getting intercepted for a touchdown. Uh, and then here's the last play. Like look how quickly like this is when Skyler comes in the game. This is like towards the end of the game. The Bills were just all over the offensive line, and that's what happens when the defensive line like knows every single play is going to be like a true pass set because like why would the Dolphins run the ball at this point of the game? You know, it's either gonna be like a quick. It could be a screen, but like. This is when the like the defense can really get after it. So that's why you can't go down super early. You have to keep the games fairly close so you can keep the defenses honest. Because if you're able to keep the defense honest and like you only get like your true pass sets like on a third down, maybe there's still ways to scheme it around and help people out that maybe need help. You can use a running back, a tight end. There's still a way to slow down those you know uh, true one on one pa like pass rushers. But uh, when it's every play, that's when the offensive line will get into like really big trouble. And then Jackson like was getting absolutely cooked by Von Miller. Even uh, Eichenberg got, it looks like Epinesa on that play, and they put two edges on the same side, but they lost very, very quickly. But, like, that's why I'm, like, never on, like, I'm not on, like, the side of where, like, oh, the offensive line's good or whatever. Like, I don't know if anyone's on that side, really, where it's, like, oh, the whole line's, like, really, really good. No, the, the whole line's just not that big of an issue because of what the scheme is, and, like, you could still have, with this offensive line, you can still have a top offensive line. Like, literally, the Dolphins had a very similar offensive line last year and we're a top offense in the league. Same two years before that, top offense in the league. Uh, without Tua, they won't be a top offense, but uh, it will probably look worse for the O-line just because Tua's out. I think he's someone who helps out with that stuff a lot. Um, but yeah, the philosophy, like the Saints have a terrible offensive line. They're the number one offense the first two weeks. But you're able to create things with scheme. That's why they just don't put as much value on it. Uh, and you, you can disagree with the philosophy, but 
it's been proven to work time and time again because Shanahan, that scheme has been at the top of the league for many, many, many years. Uh, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the time. Peace.